Hi, my name is Anthony Knapp, and I'm an architect focused on disaggregated storage in Intel. With the predominance of cloud-native applications and highly virtualized environments, significant amount of server resources are expended processing tasks beyond user applications. Some examples are hypervisors, container engines, network and storage functions. To address this challenge, Intel has introduced a new class of product called the Infrastructure Processing Unit, or IPU. An IPU is an evolutionary leap that offers full infrastructure offload. Now another infrastructure challenge comes from traditional data centers and cloud storage providers using direct attached storage for the performance sensitive applications. This approach leads to stranded capacity and poor utilization of flash with no central management of data services. In order to solve this challenge, Intel has teamed up with LightBits. LightOS is a high performance, highly available software defined storage solution integrated with Kubernetes and optimized for Intel's platform breadth of technologies. To merge these innovations, Intel and LightBits have partnered to enable an end-to-end -end defined storage solution, integrating an IPU to offload infrastructure applications. Through the IPU, the storage traffic requires no host CPU network processing, resulting in maximum flexibility in dedicating bare metal host CPUs completely for user applications. I have with me here Dave Mintern, Principal Engineer with Intel, and Abel Gordon, Chief System Architect with LightBits, who will demonstrate the use of the Intel IPU for a bare metal disaggregated storage solution. Take it away, Dave. Thank you, Anthony. This demo will show the use of the Intel IPU and LightBit disaggregated storage with LightBit Kubernetes store CSI plugin to create Kubernetes persistent volumes used by host containerized Cassandra application. The demo configuration consists of an Intel Xeon scalable processor-based host system with an Intel Mount Evans IPU that is paired with LightBit OS NVMe TCP storage cluster over a standard 100 gigabit Ethernet network via the, an Intel Tofino-based switch. On the host system, the IPU is interconnected over PCIe and presents itself as NVMe SSD physical or virtual functions to the host system software. The IPU is providing the logical NVMe SSD functionality using a combination of NVMe S interface hardware and SPDK storage software. The IPU provides the mapping between the host logical NVMe SSD namespaces and remote NVMe TCP namespaces located on the LightOS storage cluster. What I'm showing now is the Intel IPU Mount Evans board that we're using in the host system for this demo. Now Abel will describe the target side of the demo. Thanks, Dave. The target side consists of three node storage clusters running LightBits LightOS software. The combination of LightOS software running on Xeon with Intel Optane, Intel Ethernet 800 series NICs, and QLC SSDs allow us to deliver optimized bright performance. The LightOS software pulls and virtualizes the storage and exposes it to remote hosts as logical NVMe namespaces that are accessed using NVMe over TCP. In this demo, LightBit CSI plugin is used to seamlessly connect Kubernetes with the LightOS cluster and the IPU. The plugin takes care of dynamically provisioning persistent volumes from LightOS, which are bound by Kubernetes to persistent volume claims of each application pod. The persistent volume claims specify the required capacity, replication factor, and optional compression for the applications. In this case, we have two Cassandra applications, each requiring four gigabytes of storage, in the consoles, you can see three LightOS nodes and Kubernetes ready for the demo. Thanks, Abel. Now we'll start the demonstration. After we deploy the Cassandra applications, you can now see new volumes in the LightBits console and in the local NVMe SSD namespaces in the host NVMe console. The IPU is exposing the remote NVMe TCP volumes as local PCIe NVMe namespaces to the host. I will now run a stress test on the Cassandra database which will exercise use of the new Kubernetes persistent volume. The top graph shows the host Cassandra application utilization, and the bottom graphs are showing the storage network utilization of the LightBit storage targets. Thanks, Dave and Abel. This looks like Cassandra can seamlessly integrate through Kubernetes into an end-to-end -end NVMe TCP disaggregated storage solution with LightBit's LightOS and the Intel IPU. What a great example of how developers can now create user applications with more CPU resources for all types of data center needs while leveraging hyperscale-like storage for all.